All right, we're going to do, uh, we're going to start chapter 12, um, trig functions, right triangle trigonometry. You have worked with this right triangle trig, both algebra 1 and geometry. So this is going to be our sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, um, trig is uh, triangle, metric is measurement. So we're talking about triangle measurement. First thing we're going to do, we got to remember about the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is for right triangles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. For right triangles, and we've got uh, got to identify the hypotenuse, and we've got A, B, C. C is always going to be the longest side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I'm going to solve this, uh, assume this is all right angles. We're eventually looking for AD, which is this hypotenuse of the box. It's the diagonal of the box. First, we can use this triangle on the bottom. 10, 2 squared, 11. We can find this value right here. This would be for this bottom triangle. And I can do 10 squared plus 2 squared, 11 squared equals x squared, which is 100 plus 2 squared, 11. That's 4 times 11. 44. Hey, isn't that nice? It's 144 is x squared. x is 12, so I get 12. And now I have this bigger right triangle, which runs back here, runs up here, comes down there, and I have a 5 and a 12. Some of you re may remember, this is a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple is when all three sides of a right triangle are going to be um, Nice, uh, nice integers. So 5 squared plus 12 squared is that, uh, let's call that C since that's kind of what we're looking for. 25, 144, 169 is C squared. C is 13. So that's a Pythagorean triple, which is, which is a 5, 12, 13. Uh, the most common Pythagorean triple is a 3, 4, 5. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared, used everywhere in uh, real-world application. Um, there's a 7, 24, 25, and there's a few others as well. Um, when we're talking about our angle, we often use the Greek lever letter theta. Theta, this is called theta. It's the circle with a line through it. Please note that if you're talking about this angle here, this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. Hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. It does depend on where you're standing in terms of what is opposite and what is adjacent. If I go up here and call this, whoa, 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 call this angle X. Now, opposite of angle X is this side over here. So the orientation where you're standing is important. Um, you should have dealt with uh, Sokotoa in the past. Basically what you need to know are, are, are these ones right here and then these ones come along for the ride. And Remember we go so ka toa and this means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse s-o-h c-a-h ka ka cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse and uh, Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have, uh, uh, we can put together our, our six trig functions. Always do the sine, the cosine, and the tangent first. Actually, I, I kind of like to go vertically and where the, uh, the sine is, uh, if we're talking about this angle, we're talking about four fifths. Cosine is three fifths. Tangent is four thirds. Now, these other three, which I said you don't have to memorize, you just need to have an understanding. The reciprocal of the sine is the cosecant, the reciprocal of the cosine is the secant, and the reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent. So it's very easy when we're doing it this way, it's just to say cotangent is three-fourths and flip it over. Now, the, the best way to remember this is the sine and the cosecant, they, they start with a different letter and cosine and secant start with a different letter. So, and I like to just line them up because you're just gonna flip it over, five fourths, and you're just gonna flip over the cosine. And it's gonna be secant, and it's gonna be five thirds. 
uh, find the values of the six trig function. So if I was doing this, I would just go the sine of angle G is equal to, so we're standing here, that is important, opposite and hypotenuse. Remember, maybe identify your hypotenuse each time. Uh, 24 over 40, you could simplify that if you so chose. Um, cosine of G is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, tangent of G is opposite over adjacent. And then we flip them. And remember, you've got your you've got your sine, and then we I always like to put them right next to each other. Change the change the sign or change the letter, flip it over. Cosine, the inverse is the secant, flip it over. And tangent, the inverse is obviously the cotangent, flip it over. So it's just going to be inverses. There's my six trig functions. Uh, notice this is just the 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 8. So multiples of three, four, uh, Pythagorean triples are also Pythagorean triples. Uh, find the cosecant of A. So really what I want to do is I want to find the sine of A, and then I'll just flip it over. So again, don't get too caught up on the cosecant stuff. It says the tangent of A is 5 thirds. Uh, Pythagorean theorem to find C. 3 squared plus 5 squared is C squared. 9 plus 25 is C squared. C squared is 34. C is the square root of 34. This would be exact value. So now I can go to A and find the sine is 5 over the square root of 34. 5 over square root of 34. But actually I wanted the cosecant of A, which is flip it over, square root of 34 over 5. Incidentally, uh, 5 over the square root of 34 isn't uh, in correct form. We can't have a square root in the denominator, so we need to multiply the top and the bottom. If I wanted to find everything here, then I get 5 root 34 over 34. Um, this is ultimately what we're looking for, but this is the final answer for it. If we're looking for uh, um, the sign. If the sine of B is 2 thirds, okay, draw a triangle. Put in a B. Sokotoa. So, 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 so. Here's my B. Opposite. Hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem. Um, 3 squared minus 2 squared. This is going to be the square root of 5. Now let's find the cosine adjacent over. Ka! Ka! Adjacent over hypotenuse. There it is. So draw a picture. You know two of them, you can find the next one. Uh, 30, 60, 90, special right triangles. You dealt with these extensively in geometry. So you got to remember your for your 30, 60, 90s, you're always going to work off of the 30 degree. So we often call the 30, 60, 90. Sometimes when we draw it up, we don't have the X's in there like they do here. So if this is the 30, this is the 60. We often call it a 1, 2, square root 3. That's the ratio of the side lengths for all 30, 60, 90s. So you're always going to work off of the single x. If you know the hypotenuse, cut it in half. Boom, you can multiply over here. If you know this guy, double it times the square root of 3. It gets a little bit more difficult when you get this guy. you got to divide by the square root of 3. That's just one extra step. Um, now these guys over here, 45s, remember... This is an isosceles right triangle, 1, 1, square root 2 is often what it is. So these are the same, the legs are the same. And if I look at this angle here and said the sine of theta equals 1 over the square root of 2, I'm not allowed to leave it like that. So remember, we rationalize that denominator by putting the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Um, so we're going to use those. So when you have a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, you only need one side, and you can find the rest of it. But you got to know that it's a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. So here, same idea, find x. So I know I'm at 60 is here, 30 is here. This is the hypotenuse. We always cut the hypotenuse in half, and then we'll in half. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Math is hard. Uh, we always cut the 12 in half and get 6. That's going to be 6. Over here will be 
6 root 3. And you can do that pretty quickly when you have one side, but you got to know it's a 30, 60, 90. Don't ever assume something is a 30, 60, 90 unless you're told. Again, we got the same idea here. Now I know the side opposite the 30. I'm going to go to the double would be 10, and times the square root of 3 would be for the x. Uh, if they ask you to round, plug it into your calculator. I prefer exact values anyway. Uh, this is one of the more silly problems you'll ever see in your life. It says to calculate the height of the building, Joe walked 200 feet from the base of the building and used an in inclinometer to measure the angle from the his eye to the top of the building. So he's talking about finding the height, which I would probably put an H over here. And then all of a sudden it says, what is the distance from the top of the building to Joel's eye? Suddenly we're looking for this. So we start out looking for the height of the building, and then they change their mind. Silliness. Um, let's solve for, uh, solve for the D first. So I have 76 and adjacent hypotenuse. So I'm going to do the cosine of 76 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now you got to get your calculator. So get your calculator and make sure you go to mode, which is um, uh, second row, uh, second column, first row right next to the second key, and make sure that you have degree highlighted, degrees, okay? If you're in radians, you need to change it. Make sure you're in degrees if you're working in degrees. Remember, this isn't going to work. Uh, some of you may want to multiply by D and divide by the cosine of 76. I actually think setting up a proportion for these problems is really quite simple. Um, so now we can cross multiply and we should know that uh, D would be equal to 200 times 1 divided by cosine of 76 and your calculator should do that for you. Um, 200 divided by the cosine of 76 is I got, I got like 242, is that right? Did I get that right? Let's see if I got that right. Oh no, that's if you're in radians. Boy, oh boy, I'm glad I checked my calculator. 200 divided by the cosine of 76. Oh, that's way different. That's 826. So you can see how if you have the wrong mode, it's not going to, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not done there yet, silly goose. Uh, we get 826.7. Now, if I wanted to find H, I would just use the 76 and the 200 again. But now I'm going to do tangent of 76 equals H over 200. Again, you can probably recognize that you're going to multiply both sides by 200, but there's nothing wrong with a, with a, with a proportion. 200 times tangent of 76 divided by 1. So you get uh, whatever 200 times the tangent of 76 is. And I got 802. And then I guess technically, if you're looking for that height, you should add in those six feet. So I'll read carefully. Okay, last thing is when you are looking for an angle. So when we say the sine of A is equal to a half, but now I want to know the angle. I know the ratio tell me the angle. Into your calculator you got to use inverse sign. That will find the angle. So you're going to type in second and the sign which gives you this inverse sign. And what you're doing is you're asking your calculator um, please tell me the angle associated with a with uh, a sine ratio of one half. And when you do that you should get uh, you should get uh, 30. Again, you got to make sure you're in the correct degrees and you're, and you're good to go. So that's going to be second and sine, cosine, and tangent. We're working the other direction now. So if we're doing this problem right here, I would do, I would do if I'm going to use A, it says find A. So I would maybe do the sine of A is so, not opposite over hypotenuse. And now how do you undo it? You use the inverse sine. And this will give me my value for A, which I think is like 32 degrees. 32 degrees. And then remember, if this is 90 and this is 32, 
The two acutes will always have to add up to 90. Those are complementary angles. You look very nice today, Mr. 32. Well, so do you, Mr. 58. So that's going to have to be 58 degrees if you were looking for everything. Ah, we could solve for B. We could do the same thing. Um, but uh, I think you get the gist of it. Then maybe this last one here. Let's take a look. We get the, uh, well, this is a half, duh. Tan, which sine of A is 3 over 6. When is a sine a half? Well, that's a special right triangle, silly. Inverse sine of a half is going to be 30 degrees. That's a 30. That's a 60. That's a 90. Yay! All right. I think we've, uh, we've, we've done enough for today. So enjoy your homework.